In today's video, we are going to talk about how to become a nurse or midwife in Canada. So, if you are interested, why don't you come with me as we look at that. Alright, welcome back. If you are new on this channel, I really appreciate you for being here for the first time. And if you are a returning subscriber, um, it's because of it I'm always motivated to make new videos. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, just make sure you are hitting the subscribe button right under this video so that you become part of the family. What this means is that anytime I post a new video, you will be the first person to get it. I have had a lot of people ask me this question and as a matter of fact, I had to make a lot of research about this because you know i'm not working in canada at the moment but i have friends who are in there and uh, the other people i may not have come across but have made a lot of videos about becoming a nurse in canada especially if you are from africa so as part of trying to gather information about how to become a nurse or midwife in canada i came across a video about a lady i mean a Ghanaian lady who is in canada at the moment practicing as a nurse and uh, she shared her experience, I mean, how she was able to get in there to work as a nurse. So um, I found this video on the one YouTube channel known as Choco Milone. And uh, I think when I reviewed the channel, I realized that um, he interviews, I mean, I'm not too sure of where he is, but I believe he's in Canada. And uh, he interviews Ghanaian nurses or African nurses who are in Canada, just trying to let others know how they were able to get in there. So um, whatever content I'm going to share with you here is not mine. It's coming from Choco Millionaire's channel. Okay. So um, if you want more of that, I will entreat you to subscribe to his channel. I will leave the link in the description box so that you can also have access to um, whatever information he shares on the channel with regards to becoming a nurse or midwife in Canada. All right. So we can start now. I'm going to play the video and. Uh, as in where I have to basically um, react or give a commentary, I will do that, okay? She's going to be the one talking. Madam, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Now, how long have you been in Canada? If you can put a camera on you when you're oh, talking. Oh, I've been in Canada for like three years now. For like three years now? Yeah. Okay. And what is your, your, your name? Um, My name is Priscilla Sewa. Priscilla Sewa. This lady is full of fire. <laughs> She's full of fire, 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 fire. Um, but interestingly, you were a nurse in Ghana mm -hmm. for how long? I was a nurse in Ghana for like I said, I'll say three years. You were a nurse in Ghana for uh, three, years. three years. So basically, she was a nurse in Ghana, and uh, if you are in Ghana at the moment and it's your desire to work in Canada as a nurse. Or midwife then i think uh, this information is of relevance okay you just have to pay attention and listen to how she was able to i mean the easiest way to come to canada and work as a nurse which part of ghana were you working? so i i schooled in central university college and then, oh, sorry. Let people i schooled in central university college and then i did my service in sunyane in brother half side and i came back to accra to work as a nurse for two years and then i came to canada Wow, very interesting. So, you worked for just two to three years and then mm -hmm. from there you just moved to Canada? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was, it that, was it your husband that sent you to Canada? <laughs> no, it's my parents. Your parents sponsored you to come Canada. to Canada? Wow. Charlie, <laughs> thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Mommy, for <laughs> sponsoring you to come here. And um, was it a decision you made or they made that choice for you? No, so I made a decision and then they decided to come help. On, yes, oh, so I made a decision. Like this a lot, eh? So let me be on you, eh? Let me just see you. Eh? So I made a decision and they decided to help because, I mean, Canada is a good place and nobody wouldn't want to help you because, I mean, it's just the best place to be, so. Is it? All right, so, um, you know, she was fortunate to have had her parents in Canada um, who sponsored her to come in there. But I think the first thing she talks about here is the passion. I mean, she had a passion of working in Canada because if you don't have a desire to work in a place and uh, if you even get somebody to support you, um, you know, because the passion isn't there, you won't give in your all. So she was passionate about working in Canada and uh, 
by God's grace, he has somebody to support it. So the first thing I would suggest to you is to have the passion. I mean, you may not have somebody in Canada who is willing to support you or whatever, but I mean, the passion alone can help you discover, I mean, other means of getting to Canada, okay? So let's listen out. It's pleased to be, is that what you said? Yes, it's the best place I to be. I didn't say that to you. You are the one saying it. It's the best place to be. I wow. Think, yeah. Okay. If you go on the right part, though, honestly, if you get the right people to talk to, you get the good people to tell you what Canada is about and try to be very open to you, you'll get to know that Canada is good. I mean, that's right. All right, all right. So it's like um, getting the right people to talk to, okay? So in my case, when I was looking out for the opportunity to come to the UK to work as a nurse, I had to reach out to people who had already um, gone ahead of me. And I uh, just had to find out what was happening. I mean, how do I go about this? And uh, just as I've had a lot of people ask me how to go about the process I went through, it's like, I mean, if you want to go to Canada, just make sure, I mean, it's possible. Make sure you are reaching out to the right people. Try and ask questions, okay? And uh, just look out for other things you are not so clear about, okay? So one of the ways is to just... It's, it's a matter of just searching who is in Canada at the moment that I can reach out to to ask questions about nursing in Canada. Okay, just look out for all this. Reach out to the right people. That is what I want to mean. Charlie, your accent is coming in, you know, three yes. years later. <laughs> All right. Which hospital were you working at? So that if anybody has ever been there and they've seen you, how, how, which hospital were you working at? In oh, Ghana? Wow. I worked in Jubail Hospital. It's Jubail in Hospital in Sakumono. That's where you were working. Mm -hmm. Were you jabbing people hard? Or no, no. Were you angry? No. Because of the salary, were you no. jabbing and giving no. bad, bad no. injections? No. The you passion. The, best, the passion it's was there. Just the passion. We the don't. Passion I don't work there. for money. I work for. Safety, I work for the best. You're okay. not one of the nurses who was so angry because the no. pay hasn't come and you're no. jabbing people now. No, no, no. And My blessings was from God. Amen, amen. I like that. I like that. All right. And you came here. Mm -hmm. Did you come here straight as a nurse to work as a nurse or you had to do some schooling? So I So I want you to listen to this part carefully because I think this is where she's going to um, let you know how she went about the whole thing, okay? So let's see. It's very, very important. I came into school for two years. I had to do two courses, which was like yearly courses and more like a specialty course. Mm -hmm. And then I actually sent my documents in for it to be assessed. Wow, let's take it one at a time. Okay. So you came here to school for two years, mm -hmm. straight two years or one year before the other? No, no, no. So it was one year. You one did a year, one year program. course, and then I did another year. Then after that, you did another one year, yeah, similar right. to the gentleman I interviewed the last time. That's right. And um, your first course. So as I said, um, this guy is much more of interviewing people, or well, let me say African nurses in Canada, and uh, trying to figure out how they came in there. So what I would say is that if you want more of that, just make sure you are subscribing to his channel, Choco Millionaire, okay? Because this content is coming right from his channel, and I believe that you are enjoying it. I mean, you've got somebody who is a Ghanaian, who is an African, trying to share how she probably go to Canada and then started being a nurse. So that is how it is. And right now what she's saying is that um, she came from Ghana to Canada to probably pursue a specialty course, okay, um, for two years. But I think uh, she did two different courses. So let's listen to what she has to say about the courses. I did critical care. Yes. Critical care. One of the courses I suggested to you the last time, guys. Critical care. Mm -hmm. She came to do critical care. Which school? In Niagara College. Niagara College. The same college I showed you guys the last time. Do you just take note of the college. Okay. Uh -huh. That I stopped by. She came here to do critical care uh, for one year. And then after that, you decided to do a second year. That's right. Okay, yeah. uh, your second year program, what course is that? I did gerontology. Why the change from critical care to gerontology? I mean, there are a lot of options, like there are a lot of courses available you would want to choose. Mm -hmm. So I decided to do critical care because I've always loved to work in the ICU and all. And I chose gerontology because we have a lot of older adults in Canada. So, I mean, you need. I decided to just take it and then it was practical. So I had to, I was able to go 
to witness how Canadians take care of their people. Come over you. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. How to take care of their people and everything. So that is why I chose gerontology. So you moved from critical care, one year study, mm -hmm. to a second year study of gerontology. Yes, and right. the reason is that uh, it's, it's an area that takes care of uh, elderly people in Canada, sure, and you have sure. passion for that. Yeah. And is the pay also one of the reasons? Is it no, better pay? No, no, no. But it's you not just love. Of, yeah, I mean. You love it. Yeah. yeah. But here you are, you were a nurse in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Were you disappointed that you had to come and then start all over in school, or you knew that there was a pathway? that after that you were going to be okay so the person that helped me made me know that mm -hmm. there is a pathway okay. but it's not going to come easy okay so I so you see i want you to take notice of this aspect the fact that you've heard people come to canada in the uk usa doesn't mean that the process was that easy i mean it takes some time and you have to be patient and that's why I said I have to reach out to the right people to get to know how long it took for them to, I mean, get in there, okay? So some of these things will just, I mean, work on your patience and you'll be able to um, probably work within time and also get yourself at your final destination. So, I mean, as she said, there's a pathway to getting to Canada and I think she's still explaining that. So let's go and then hear her out. I actually spoke to the person, the person decided to talk to me and then explain how things are. And it's all about patience. You need to be patient because if you're not a patient person, you probably think the person is lying to you. You probably think the person is saying all sort of things. But the person has been here and knows what is happening here. So I just decided to listen to the person and then I went from there. I mean, she was a nurse too. So whatever that was going through, she had already gone through. So the point is reach out to people who are in the game you want to play. I mean, you have interest in, okay? So if you want to become a nurse in Canada and you think um, there's somebody in Canada, but probably in a different sector, I don't think the person will be able to give you much information with regards to nursing in Canada. So just reach out to the direct person. I mean, somebody who is in Canada working as a nurse or midwife. And I think you'll be able to have... Um, the right information to make an informed decision. So you have somebody here, and the person was yeah. just linking you Thank up you. and giving you the information. Right. Guys, that is why you need to be in a good network of people, right? right. Um, the kind of people you connect with can determine where exactly you'll be tomorrow. It is an area that I don't joke with. I like connecting with people who are full of fire, full of information. Uh, hanging around with the right people at the right time could just be your point of uh, a miracle. Uh, yeah, that's so true. You see, nowadays people are desperate to travel just to seek for greener pastures to improve upon their career and all of that. So whatever information they hear, they just jump onto it and then try to act. But I think that is so wrong. Most people have done this and ended in places they never thought of being. So just make sure that you are seeking for the right information from the right people. That is so, so true. Um, in as much as we have good people, we have bad people. I mean, in as much as there are people who can tell you the good things and then let you know what's happening in Canada in terms of nursing, some people can fake out. There are others out there who are faking stories and trying to let you know that they are in there working as nurses and that they can help you. And I know they did, they take your money and then just, I mean, push you to a place you never expected. So what I would say is that just make sure have patience and then reach out to the right people, ask questions, and then I believe that once you're able to get answers, um, you'll be more certain and that will help you make a decision as to whether you are going or out to pursue that course or not. She was lucky. She had somebody here who is also a nurse, mm -hmm. and the person will say, "You know what, my girl." It's all going to work out fine. Just come in and come do some schooling. Mm -hmm. And you have a pathway to becoming a nurse in Canada mm -hmm. after your school. That's right. So, critical care one year, gerontology for another one yeah. year. And then after that, what next? Now you finish postgraduate work permit. You are eligible for that. That's right. So, you apply for that. Mm -hmm. And you have. So, that. I'll say one thing that I did also is I mean, after my critical care, you know that coming to Canada, you have to also study. It's pretty hard sometimes and dicey when you decide to come to Canada without their kind of education. So my eyes are so red. Because it... I did it up 
with my education in Ghana. So if you have education in Ghana, can it will need it to be can it, can you just explain that part so people can get after your first call, your one year, mm -hmm. Kurikaka, you did what? I, I I actually applied for my education to be assessed. Oh, you applied for the Canadian government? For the Canadian nursing, I'll say the, the Canadian, Canadian nursing, nursing Association exactly. to assess, assess my your education. credentials from Ghana That's as right. a nurse. That's right. That you did that. It means yeah. you went through uh, a conversion of your experience exactly. and education from exactly. Ghana. Exactly. Because you applied. Exactly. I applied. You applied Because they wanted okay. to know what we're we doing in Ghana. Is it the same here? You want to know whether whatever you did in Ghana yeah. and studies is the same in That's Canada. Right. So you applied. That's right. Okay, and then when you apply, they ask you to do X, Y, Z. What did you do? So when you apply, they ask you to... Come around you. Sorry. They want when to see your face. They've seen my face a lot of time. Huh? Good. <laughs> so when you apply... Okay, let me actually hold this since we've stopped now. Yeah, I'll hold it. So, so um, basically, she's still telling the story. I mean, how she got in there. Um, but if you are new here, just make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you become part of the family. I mean, as much as I make research, I'll try and then add to some of these videos so that you get to watch. And uh, I believe that will boost your morale to pursue that dream to the core. Okay. So um, at this particular point, my understanding um, tells me that, um, you know, you, it, it's very difficult to basically move from Ghana or Africa and then come to Canada. I should have been say you, are, you should be accepted. I mean, it doesn't work that way. So... You should basically undertake a course that will help you fit into the Canadian system because you know you may have the nursing degree, the diploma, or whatever, but that is not much effective um, in Canada. So they would want you to do a course so that at the end of the day, um, you top up your nursing degree or nursing diploma you had in your country. Okay, so you may have, I mean, it's just that's basically the point. Okay, I think that's the easiest way to be able to fit into the system is much more similar to coming to the UK because you know uh, our healthcare system in Ghana is quite different even though uh, I mean whatever we study may seem um, to be the same but you should, the equipment and other stuff you have don't permit us to basically fit well into the system and they believe that I mean once we get here they have to um, make us undergo training to basically fit into the system so even if you are coming to the UK that's why you have to sit for the worst key you have to undergo um, presentership programs and other trainings that will help equip you to basically I mean fit into the system so that is not different when you want to become a nurse in Canada you can't just go in there with your nursing diploma or midwifery diploma or nursing degree or midwifery de uh, degree you have to do a top-up course so that basically the Canadian NMC would assess that together with your home country qualification and there you can be given the mandate to practice as a nurse or midwife so let's listen to whatever she has to say about that doesn't get tired so when you apply they mm -hmm. literally ask you so your education mm -hmm. maybe your university your work experience wherever you worked and everything so they will need some documents from that place to from, also Ghana, from Ghana from all first. the places you work at or you school yeah from all the places you school, certified documents certified documents well stated like very much stamped information and stamped, sealed. so i think um you have to take notes of the requirement so i mean you should have documents from where i mean the places of work and it should be well stamped okay i don't think um just a signature will do just make sure that it, 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 it's well stamped i mean it should be official you will need your nursing diploma or degree certificates and i think transcript and other stuff may be included so let's continue that's right so they would ask for that your education i think they'll ask for your education they will ask for your job description what you did when you were even working in jubei in, hospital that's right so even with service whatever you did they will ask and it needs to be signed and then they would assess and get back to you and then they will say how long did it take the assessment Maybe a year maybe. one year yeah. wow so it's going to take a year so that is why you have to exercise patient but i think there was a trick she did and she was able to fit into the system as fast as possible. Let's listen to whatever she has to say about that. Well, basically, when you were about to start your second year, you had and already applied, that's right. done it. That was really smart of you, huh? Yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah. To be honest, I didn't know this part of the problem. I think the understanding she's trying to put across is that, you know, she said she did two courses when she came to Canada. She started with physical care 
and you know because she knew the application was going to take a year when she was about applying for the second course she started with the canadian um nmc application and once she was done with the gerontology course i mean she the process was already due and she was ready to basically become a nurse so i think it's a smart idea as um the um interviewer is seeing i mean yeah that's why you, Papi, you didn't even finish your school and you already no, started no, working on that that's right all right that's good and your reason for doing that what was your reason for doing that you wanted to practice here that's as a right. nurse that's so right. you wanted them to convert yeah. your nursing license yeah. from ghana yeah. yeah but it would it would have been difficult for you to have done this from ghana if you were not in canada so you came as a student first that's right and then whilst you were in school you decided to so convert your nurse. yeah because i've all heard right. a lot of people that start from ghana but when you start from ghana i mean it's dicey. You might get it, you might not get it. You might but get it, you, you might not get it. But it's legit when you school here. And it's you more legit and easier if when you are already yeah. in school here. Yeah. In, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. You came to Because they feel like some things she learned in Ghana, it doesn't meet up. So if you school here, it goes to meet up everything. It, meets up, it, it, meets then everything it makes everything. Like, like, okay, like I want to say this, right? You mean that they suspect that our education in Ghana might not be solid? So That's when right. you come here and you do a bit of Canadian education, they're like, all right, she's, she's going to us right. now. That's right. We can give her the chance. That's all right. That's, That's right. a nice Because Ghana is a developing country. Ghana is a developing country. country. That's, so true. Makes, yeah, That's true. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. So I think after assessment and everything, they give you the eligibility. And now you have to study and write exams. You have to now take their license here. Exams. So, I mean, this... The process might seem cumbersome, but I think uh, it's not that uh, it's not so. Um, so after you've submitted the document to the Canadian, I mean, regulatory body, together with your home qualification, whether diploma or degree, um, probably you have to assess that, and it takes a period of one year. Now after that, what happens is that you have to sit for an exam, which is the English. But um, she was saying that we have. I mean, two set of exams, one for people who hold a degree qualification in their home country and then the other for people who hold the diploma qualification. So what I mean is that if you are coming there with diploma, there is a set of exams you have to write. And if you are coming with um, degree, there is also an exam you have to write. So let's look at that. you down uh -huh. so it also depends if you're a diploma nurse you have exams you have to write if you're a degree nurse you write the anklings but if you're a diploma nurse you have to write the rpn but registered rpn what does it stand for it's um, so registered practical nurse registered practical, practical nurse. nurse so that's RPN. like a diploma nurse that's like in, diploma nurse meaning the Ghana. person is similar to a diploma nurse in, in Ghana, Ghana. That's right. right and then so i think yeah it's well understood so if you're a diploma nurse what this means is that you'll be writing the R, RPN, the what is that, that? Registered Practical Nurse. Yeah. So, what this means is that diploma nurses in Canada are referred to as registered practical nurses. And uh, degree nurses, they have a special name. She mentioned that. Let's continue. The degree one, okay. And the degree one is a four years. So, that one you write NCLEX. But the good thing I heard, and I've seen someone that has going through it. The person with the diploma came here, they assessed with the education the person did here, and the person was able to get, even though the person didn't do degree, the person was able to make it to write the anklets. That's good. So because the person was a diploma in Ghana, studied in Canada, so this person added the two courses. Mm -hmm. This person didn't add the one course. Because mm -hmm. I am a degree, I added one course. You did a degree in nursing in Ghana, so you only That's added right. one course. course. But because the person is a diploma, and the person did the two course and added it to the diploma, the person was eligible to write the end All right, guys. So I think um, the simple understanding here is that if you are coming with diploma, then you need to do two courses to match up to degree. But if you are coming with degree, you need one course to basically write the English. So what this means is that if you want to upgrade from the diploma level, um, after you've written the RPN, 
then you still have to basically do an additional course to be able to um, write the English. So I think the simple thing you can do or the smart thing you can do is to, um, I mean, if you're coming from Africa with diploma, um, the best thing you can do is to just come in there and do two courses at a go. And uh, you'll be able to um, write the English and then be considered as a degree nurse. Okay, but if not then, um, you can still match up to the one course and then try and work out your process with the Canadian regulatory body after which you can still, I mean, pursue another course and yeah, it's individual preferences, yeah. This is my first live interview with somebody from Africa who was practicing as a nurse and came here. You remember the video I did? I was basically saying the same thing, that the easiest way to come here as a nurse is to come to school. Um, are you excited so far, being here, your oh, journey, yeah. you finished your school, yeah. it was quick, two yeah. years, it came fast. Not the whole full two years, right? It's about one and a half crown yeah, for two true. years. That's true. And within one and a half year, you were actually done with your two years program. Mm -hmm. And now you are working too. Mm -hmm. You, where are you working with the government? Are you working with the government? Are you working private? Uh, I'm working outside with the government. You're working with the government now. Mm -hmm. Okay, now comparing whatever you are here, the conditions of service, the salary and everything back home, would you rather... Been, okay, yeah, so uh, first of all, let me say one thing. Uh, it's everything you do is by God's grace. That's what I would say. Ev yeah, um, I also support this. And uh, I would say I'm in agreement with that, okay? Because sometimes, I mean, our ways are not God's ways. And as a matter of fact, if you have a plan or an idea in mind, just make sure you are praying about it. Um, I remember when I started my IELTS um, journey, I had to just commit this into God's hands that if it's God's will, then um, I should probably um, get opportunity to work in the desired country I'm looking at. And by God's will, it did happen. So, I mean, just make sure, and as much as we are going through the process, as much as we are reaching out to people to get information, also reach out to God, present your situation to Him. And uh, I believe that He will back you up, okay? Um, it's by God's grace. Yeah, I support whatever she's saying. Anything you do, don't forget to take God out of it because he directs your path he leads your path in yeah. everything you do so i would say that coming to canada to be a nurse has been a great opportunity it has been my dream my dad if my dad can see me he knows it it has been my dream not because of good living not because of anything you always learn a lot like a lot of things that i did in ghana has helped me here to even improve more that's mm -hmm. what I would say. Yeah, that so, was a good foundation for you. So exactly. not, not that bad. No, 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 no. It no, was no. a good foundation no, for no, you. Not that bad. I like that. I not like that. that bad at I'm all. I'm happy that you're pointing Ghana that out. was yeah. a good place like mm -hmm. to build you up. But when you come here, it's like you're taking one step ahead. Mm -hmm. So it opens doors and it opens a lot of opportunities for you to be able to be a good nurse. That's what I would say. Because even... Even in this country, everything you do, you're still learning. You're still learning. So I'll even say, even at work, even though I'm working, I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. You know, as much as Ghana helped me, this place helped me, and all, oh, I'm still learning. So, I mean, it never ends. So, yeah, so nursing in Ghana is good. I mean, don't be discouraged doing your nursing in Ghana. I mean, because it's like it gives you a lot of opportunities. I mean, once you get in here, um, you only have to just learn one or two things to equip yourself with the system and that is all because most of the things i mean we do in ghana are done here except that they are sometimes done in, in a different context or in a different way and uh, you have to just go through a little training to basically um get yourself abreast with the system so nursing in ghana is good and that is why i think that it's better you start off from ghana and then you rise up to the ladder yeah all we have to do is learn more all the time so yeah. it's been good it's been good so far yeah. it's been good and i remember my previous appointments with you you uh you guys are overtime workers right? you work a lot no we don't we don't we don't we don't overwork for no, the nurses we are so far we don't they overwork. work a lot i can tell you we don't overwork I mean, it's their passion Okay, so it's, it's the passion. passion that makes me overwork because right. <laughs> because sometimes you know you don't have the family here and sometimes uh -huh. the passion makes you feel like the person you're caring for is your family. 
and it's that's you're taking care of exactly it's almost like your family exactly that's when you have the passion only passion there because so it's not the money for you was the passion Exactly, because I don't have my family here, and they're the people that I go, I talk to, and I care for. So, in the process of the caring and the conversation... Well, sometimes, yeah, I do understand her point, you know. You are here alone, you don't have your family members in here, and you're always in the house, it's not going to a place of interest. It's like, you have no one to talk to, so the only option is to be on the wall, so that you get to interact with your patients, you get to interact with your other colleagues, and, I mean, a whole lot of that. Apart from that, um... I mean, even though at the end of the day, it comes with a reward, but that is a major concern here. You don't, you know, I mean, you just want somebody to talk to. You just want to mingle with people. And that is why you have to be on the world at a particular point in time. And yeah. Thank you. Alice, it keeps you a little bit. Okay. So now when I see any of your colleagues mm. doing 16 hours, I'm not going to say they're working. No, hours. it's not I would passion. say they're passionate. Huh? Right. But some people work a lot though. <laughs> Alright, so this is the information she shared and uh, to give a summary of it, um, what this means is that the easiest way to come to Canada is to come through school. I mean, you are coming with the purpose of schooling, okay? So I think that is the easiest way. Um, if you are coming straight away to practice here, it might be difficult. As she was saying, it's 50-50. It might happen that you get or you won't get. So just come and uh, do one or two courses and uh, they'll be able to assess a match of that of your degree or diploma qualification to the assistant. So thank you very much for watching this video. I believe it has been very helpful. If you have not yet subscribed, make sure you are hitting the subscribe button right under this video so that you become part of the family. There are more videos, there are more educative content I'm willing to give out to you, okay? Make sure you are sharing, liking this video so that YouTube showcases this video to more people. And, uh, what else do I have to say? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Also, make sure you are subscribing to Choco Millionaire's YouTube channel, especially if it's your desire to work in Canada because um, he interviews more Canadian nurses, especially those from Africa and uh, other areas, just for them to share their experience, okay? So, this is one of the experiences I brought to you. Um, there are more of them to um, see on this channel. Thank you very much. My name is Seth, and I hope to see you in my next video.